What's up, everybody? Welcome to a big prediction-based pro show. Trevor, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. I'm excited to release the fact that A.G. Kruger is going to Ashland to be the next head coach. So what that means for us personally is that Morgan Shiga is probably moving a 1,000 miles closer back to Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to just bring that right up because that's a big one. One, you know, Ashland going out and making a really, really good hire. But two, uh, you know, Kruger was there for, I think he might have went to school there, but he was there for like 13 years. He worked with Judd Logan. Um, so what was he, like a four-time Olympian? Them hiring him, bringing him back to, to Ohio to get work done and, and just sort of create or, or keep that legacy rolling, I think is absolutely phenomenal and a good – uh, a good sign from their, you know, from their athletic department. So, yeah, absolutely. congrats to Kruger. Yeah, I think we're going to keep seeing monsters coming out of Ashland. So, that's sweet. All right, so this takes us, before we get into the NCAA stuff, uh, this takes us into Chase Ely popping off, going 1998, taking the world lead currently, uh, and just, Showing us, you know, the the outdoor season, especially especially with women's shot, is going to be extremely competitive. Yeah, just all over the place, people dropping bombs, and this is, I mean, this is huge. What's, is this her PR? No, she's four. she won over twenty indoors. Uh, okay, the, yeah, uh, that's what I thought. Trevor, Still. you don't remember all of the throwers in the entire world that we're constantly talking about what their PRs are. <laughs> How dare you? Uh. So Ryan Krauser with a third meet over 23 meters. Um, and this is, you know, I guess the last throw show that we did, I think that's when he had the bad technical throw, but you could see he was starting to figure it out, figure out that feeling again. I feel like he lines up that position out of the back of the circle, right grounds really well, left is quick to the front, and everything's just super balanced as he as he shifts forward. Here's my, here's the thought. Is this Krauser's most controlled 23 meter throw? Ooh, probably. I feel like, I feel like the other times it was like more adrenaline based and here he just seems very, like, it's basically very a, calm technical. Like, yeah, it's basically a static start and he pushes that, that right wide. Like, and that's scary to think. Yeah. <laughs> I think what's weird for me, I did want to bring this up, is that there's an interview with Krauser where, yeah, that is a nice, like, simple throw. And it was, like, 60 degrees. Yeah. Um, they brought up the circles. Apparently, after he broke the world record in, the, in this actual circle, they completely changed the circles. Oh, really? Yeah. So huh. I don't really grasp why you would do that. Um, but yeah, apparently those circles that are there this year are not the same as the ones from last year. Well, apparently you can still throw 23 meters in them, so. Not when it's wet, though. That's true. Not <laughs> when it's wet. Not when it's wet. 75, yeah. 6. <laughs> it's all right. That's just crazy. <laughs> Ooh. Now this is. This is interesting. 2020. Okay, so so this is actually the world leading throw, right? So this is Song Jae Yoon going 2020, and so this is currently the the world leading throw. Man, honestly, I feel like if you wouldn't have the distance on here, this for some reason I I like. How she makes it go that far, like she just cranks on the finish, yeah, like so explosive. Gives it a good scream there too. Yeah. yeah. The after scream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rage scream. So what do you see technically in this throw? I think like how works. does this go twenty twenty? I mean, she what? grounds really well with the right. I think the left could get a little bit deeper, but I think she sets up the back of the circle pretty well. Comes over that left at the left. I would just say she could come around that left a little more on the finish with a get a deeper left and then finish around it longer. But technique-wise, and the fact that Krauser commented on there makes me wonder, like, is he working with this chick? 
I don't know if he is. I don't know. I, yeah. I feel like he probably just, just sees her. I feel like there is room for improvement with her technique, even though she's so, you know, she's obviously powerful. Very methodical and just yeah. hits good positions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think there's like, I think that's part of it too, just that she's not like rushing everything. It's, she's just setting stuff up and and, and going for it. But. Yeah. I like it. It's a good movement. You gotta turn off her uh, <coughs> audio. There you go, Trevor. So, Kovacs travels all around the world, gets like a 90 hour delay, sleeps for eight hours, wakes up and goes 22, 25. And I think that's like one of the crazy parts with him, with Tom Walsh. It's like, dude, these guys, their travel schedules, it's not easy. It's not easy to like fly 10 hours, change four to five hours in time zones. Uh, it's definitely the unseen. Yeah. It's the unseen part of um, sleep in a small the bed, field world. have food that you're not used to having. You know, you're fatigued, you're tired, you're stiff. You, everything is literally stacked up against you. You wake up at the weird time in the middle of the night, you're staring at the ceiling, and it's just like, People don't comprehend it. And then to go out and throw 22. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out, I was talking to Sam. Sam's in Rome right now where he's like, Joe's like, yeah, that's why I'm only throwing 22. And it's like, <laughs> that's what these guys want to get to is where they're in that travel scenario and they can still throw like their right. only throw. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks good. I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens at Nationals, which we should do a prediction on who's going to be the top four at U.S. Nationals because we're taking four to Worlds. But That's true. We need to how, make our NCAA predictions how many, first. How many weeks out are we from Nationals now? Six. Six. Okay. Oh, no, four. Four. Three and a half to four. Oh, wow. So that takes us into uh, Alex Rose flying over to Rabat and just – Absolutely, I, I, this is another thing, you know, we're talking about the unseen in the throwing world. Alex doesn't have funding from an NGB, you know, he throws, he represents Samoa. Uh, so he's got a full-time job, his wife's pregnant, he flies over to Morocco, he's been doing, he's had a, an EV conference for the last week, so he's only thrown twice in the last two weeks. Goes to Rabat, the Diamond League which is a stacked field, 10 of the best throwers in the world, along with Sam, you know, another garage strength throws you thrower, and goes 63 meters. So I think that's cool that we had two people in the Diamond League. Yeah. Even if Alex had to deal with some craziness. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and I mean, Sam, too, we don't have video of his throw, but he went 64 plus. Yep. And so, I mean, I feel like it's just awesome seeing them you know, competing well in, you know, environment like that. What was Full the stadium. Time? What was the last time America went like 64 in a Diamond League? Probably 10 years up. When America went 64 in a Diamond League at least, yeah, I don't know. I got to see when, when was that Rodney throw? I think it was 2015 mm -hmm. when Rodney did that. Dude, he's looking good here, Alex. I like his left in the middle. Like, I feel he, like he's a little patient with that left coming around. I feel like he's not falling off the front yeah. like some of his throws, too. Yep. Danny Hall with this? a PR, yeah. 7944. Look at his series. Damn. Damn. <laughs> six, nope. six in the world. Number one in the U.S. Putting the heat on Rudy. Danny and Rudy gonna create a big showdown. That's where we've gotta have that yeah, face right. off. Yeah. That'll be good. The two nicest guys in all of throwing, <laughs> along with Alex Young, pretending to be serious for a face off. <laughs> yeah. There they are. <laughs> I didn't even know that picture was there. Oh geez. Man. That's awesome. <laughs> the man. <laughs> oh, that's a great picture. Oh, that's a huge throw too. Yeah. What a great, you know, big PR. And that takes us into Brooke Anderson going 77-19, following up what she did. And, I uh, know, oh it was uh, Castanavoid who went really big in uh, in Tucson. But even this, 77-19, it's crazy where the women's hammer is. You know, who's going to be the first female this year over 80 is going to be interesting. Mm. And it's very going to happen. It's 
it's seriously going to happen in the next couple of weeks at least in the U.S. and I mean I mean in the U.S. So yeah, get back to work. She's going to prep for U.S. Nationals. Julian Weber. I did see too. One of the German Jav guys is back. Um, the one that was hurt for like two or three years. He Roller? Just, no, the other one. He won. I think he won Worlds like four or five years ago. So now I think they have four or five guys competing that have thrown over 89 meters. Wow. Um, 8954 for Julian. Wait, is he German? Yeah, he's German, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, they've just got a monopoly on, I mean, not quite, but definitely the highest. Uh, yeah, team-wise. You know, team-wise, yeah. yeah. As soon as he rips that, he knows what's going on. Yeah. That's awesome. Start coming on. I mean, I, I like this angle, too, just, like, from the side. Yeah, you like can, you can see really everything. see how well he transfers weight from his right to his left through to the middle and into the finish. Yep. Um, getting down, grounding quickly. Yeah, this is nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's so quick. Yeah. And the other thing... I don't think we've mentioned this before, but Velasa. Oh, yeah, he got, he, yeah, now he's throwing for Velasa because for some reason, I, you know, I mean, I know, I guess Nike let him loose last year, right? That was, that was big news last yeah. year. And that's where it's just like this, this, the lack of support. And he is throwing in those, those Velasa shoes. The lack of support in the throws is just, there's a big void currently that needs right. to be filled. And Velasa stepping in with Tom there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And some more. So this happened, or we hadn't even discussed Che going 71 meters, and we might have. I just cannot remember the last time that we went over his monster yeah, we, bombs. Yeah, we did. He also just posted a video of him doing, like, hang power snatches. At, it's either 127 or 137, just cranking. <laughs> It's like, dude, this guy's like 6'8 with like nine feet long arms. The distance you got to move a yeah. bar, get it over your head. And just crushing that. Yeah. He's like super, super consistent. I think this was 69'14, if I remember. Man, he snaps on that 69, finish. 16? 68. 68? 69, 68. So he had two throws over 69 in Rabat? Also, is he throwing in the Velasas? It looks like it. Yeah. Huh. And he had two throws over 69. Yeah, I think he is. Wow. Is this the furthest discus throw in Velasas? Or maybe last week. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't realize it. Yeah. Man. So he's going to be tough to beat this year. Yeah. And then you start talking about Alekna, you know, stalls back over 69. I mean, I and I, I can't imagine him. He's not, he's not going anywhere for a while. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Like yeah, he's, he's just gonna keep coming on. Yep. So we're gonna see a lot more. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be some good competition, the next few years. Maddie Denny had a PR too, sixty-seven yeah. plus. Yeah, he man, I, I did want to talk about him. I feel like he, every major competition I see him in, I feel like he, he PRs, games up. he games up, like yeah. even in a stadium, comes yeah. out PRs. Yeah, he's stone cold. Tyler Williams going back back to the hammer. 71-25. Huge PB. He's another one that I'm excited to see what happens at, at US Nationals. It's you know, there's a whole bunch of guys that are sort of like bubble dudes that, that can pop off. Yeah. You, know, you put them into that situation where there's nothing for them to lose and they just want to, you know, show everybody how they've been working, how they've been training over the last couple of years, and just go in and compete. Tyler's also a uh, D3 All-Star. A, a D3 All-Star, yep. And a, and a viewer of the throw show. I know he watches the throw show, so <laughs> if you're out there, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> comment below. <laughs> you can see every garage strength thrower comment. Yeah, on this. Right. That's a big talk. Yeah, That's a me, big and, uh, me and Tyler are MAC record holders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, congrats. That's big. And then Benji Shu. 
freshman, 193.10, or 193.8, 59.10 in the shot. So 193.8 is an absolute huge throw in the discus in high school for anyone, let yeah. alone a freshman. Yeah. Good movement, left leg cuts well, left side rotates really well into the finish, sets everything up really nicely. He's like a really good example with like technique. He doesn't jump at all. Right. It's like, get down, go. Yeah, yeah. You know, and sometimes he like shifts forward a little early. But he does a good job even with like being patient through the middle right. with his right side so he doesn't shift that right side forward. Right. Yeah, he looks good. That's a dude. I mean, yeah, what is he getting? What's it? Here's a prediction. <laughs> what does he throw by the end of his high school career? Three more years throwing discus. 227. That'd be huge. And 74 in the shot. Yeah. yeah he might throw farther than that. Yeah. Because I, I think he's going to blow up like the next year and a half. Yeah. So Anderson Peters going 90 75. Pride of Grenada. Boom, huge throw, good movement. Man, he's so fast on the runway. It's good positions. Yeah, that's big. That's huge. Any 90 meter throw, that's just incredible. Yeah, and I just feel like these guys are gonna get to, I, I don't know, I, I think huge things are gonna happen in Eugene. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. Here Ooh. he is. <laughs> Here we go. Javen Williams. <laughs> he's he's 66 such a character feet. all around. Yo, this this was we should probably turn it up. Yeah. So this is Trevor filming here. Yeah, I went nuts after he released this because I knew he was so close to hitting one. But yeah, I mean so Javen is a junior, throws 66 feet at States. This is really his last competition ever. Yeah, and like you know that pretty much, right. yeah. Yeah, and so I, it was just amazing that he came out. He knew it was there. He knew this throw was there all season long. And on his second to last throw of he his high school it. career, he, he hits it. So Breaks um, Joe Kovacs' state yeah. record. Breaks my county record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throws a huge PR. I mean, it's like a five-foot PR, basically. Yeah, it was. Like, all but five feet. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Before he early enrolls for Penn State's football team. Yeah. Great job, Javen. That's huge. Congrats, Trevor. Thank you. And a lot of people are... Uh, I do, did want to mention a little bit. Here's my take on what all the people who are asking about the fouls. So, in PA, the shot needs to land before it before you can step out of the circle. I think he comes under complete control after he finishes right it. Yeah. But in his mind, he's thinking, oh, I need to wait for the shot to, to no, land when he rotates before around, I step out. He plants. Right, and right he's under control. There, then he does that. And then in his mind, he's like, oh shoot, what if the shot didn't land yet? Yeah. And that's why he starts, he, he like falls back because he wants to stay in the circle until the shot lands. Yeah. So. Uh, for all those wondering out there. Classic throwing world. Someone did something <laughs> well, I need to poo-poo it. Back to Tom Walsh. Oh, there's another view. Oh, nice. Oh, oh nice. That's sweet. <laughs> That's awesome. And even Conrad went 2166, so we hadn't even mentioned that. Yeah, like, That's big. Man, he catches that deep. Ooh. That's interesting. How does he save that? He's just hugging oh, that billboard. Yeah, board. right. Still, yeah, that's, that's a big competition. Yeah, that's huge. All right, so now we got to get into what's going to happen at NCAAs. First, Trevor, let's go over teams. Cal, 
Arizona State, Nebraska, Oklahoma, UVA. I think that's everybody. Who's going to come out of this weekend as the best team, men and women? You know what I'm going to say, probably. Probably. I mean, I don't know. I mean... Cal's going to come out of this weekend as the number one men's and women's throws team. It's Cameron Rogers, two absolute monsters in the discus, uh, two monsters in the shot. Another female that's thrown, I think she threw 71, uh, who could get second to Cameron. Um, possibly yeah. two NCAA record holders. I mean, Alekna and Rogers, but mm -hmm. possibly even the meet records uh, get shattered this weekend. Yeah. I do think UVA could challenge on the men's side with Javelin and Discus. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that's fair. And then Maria, of And course. Maria on, on the women's side, yeah. Um, and But, I mean, Arizona State with... And Oklahoma. Did I say Oklahoma? Uh, oh, maybe, maybe not. Or Alabama. Is that Alabama the yeah, was the other one, yeah. yeah. Um, that. But yeah, I mean, Arizona State has Turner and Urende. Like they're, yeah, they're, you know. They okay, so who wins win. men's shot? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Pippery for men's shot. Yeah, Pippery, and I think top eight. I think eighth place. Dude, eighth place might be 20 meters, which I think is going to be wild. But I'm just going to say 1973 is eighth right. place. Yeah. All right, then who who wins men's discus? Alekna. Alekna? Who's second? Romero. Yeah, what, he, he's, what makes how many throws over 60 meters? That's, Ralph that's from, a question. Uh, six. six. Adar Shear comes in eighth place, all Americans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Women's shot. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Adelaide's a safe bet, but um, Van Klinken could pop yeah, off. Yeah, she could definitely. She, she they'll go toe to toe. Yeah, yeah. I think that'll be the real good competition. I, I mean, I think like I think it'll take what seventeen sixty, seventeen fifty to all American. That'd be deep. I think it'd be 17-20. 17-20? I'll go a little more conservative. All right. And it's bad that I don't know enough about women's discus currently in the in the NCAA to really predict. I Other than Van Klinken. Yeah, I would assume she's going to take the whole thing, and it's probably going to be like 55 to All-American, but I could be completely wrong. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty safe bet from past... Uh, Past meets, but um, yeah. What about what about men's hammer? What's that sport? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, After I just talked about Danny and Rudy the whole time, men's hammer. I think will end up being. That's a tough one because I always feel like it's just super safe to say like 68 to to 69 meters, and you're all American. But yeah. I could be again. Completely wrong, not knowing the depth of the field. Right. Um, I would say safe bet 68-20. And then with women's, dude, women's hammer, I think it's 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 growing substantially where it's like it could be you know 65 plus. But again, I I could be totally wrong with all of this. Yeah. Um, I'd say in Cameron Rogers is definitely the. That's the thing. It's the, like the stand out there. And and you have someone like her who can just walk in, smack a good warm up throw, and that's gonna it's gonna win the meet. Right. You know, yeah. she's the greatest ever. Yeah. Um, and, and and she might go. And if you ask me, I think she has the most potential out of the entire field, even probably more than Alekna to be like the greatest in that sport of all time. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think Alekna has potential to break the world record, but I think she's got. She could really, based off of where she is with her age, I don't know, I, th I think she could end up being an 82, 83 meter girl, you know? Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting to see. And she usually competes really, really well. I think Alekna's gonna compete really well. Romero and, and the Jamaican guys have had like 9 million throws over, you know, 62, 63 this year. Right. And then we're gonna end up seeing um, 
you know, in the in the, the men's discus, it's just going to be interesting. Pippery, I think, will have his 30th meet in a row over 21 meters and mm. probably be a lock there. And I, I'm also just interested to see how Turner is competing uh, with his health. And, and I, I think he, he banged up his ankle pretty bad. So mm. we'll see how he's recovered. And yeah. I guess we'll know by the week's end. Yeah. So you guys can fact check us and comment down below with how bad we are at predicting <laughs> the NCAA comp. But I'm predicting Cal as the number one throws team when it's all said and done and all the dust clears in yeah. the 2022 NCAA season. Peace.